hello the weather today can't decide whether it wants to be sunny or cloudy so this lightness situation is going to change a lot i just want to warn you uh today i'm going to be talking about a beautifully foolish endeavor by hank green this came out in july it is very new and it is the sequel to an absolutely remarkable thing by hank green uh, so at the end of an absolutely remarkable thing uh, april was dead or was she and the cars had disappeared um in this this just takes everything to a whole new level um it is the ultimate showdown between good and evil on the good side we have april and the gang and the hope that humans are benevolent and on the evil side we have capitalism and the hubris of men and uh all of that plus a bunch of alien technology i've heard a lot of people or maybe it's just hank coming at me from like 15 different angles <laughs> saying that um this sequel is considered better than the first like like the rare time that a sequel is better than the first book and uh, so i had really high expectations and it didn't quite live up to it sadly it was a really fun romp like the last time um but as i shall explain it just kind of got to the point where i didn't buy it like i didn't buy the narrative let's start with the good parts uh like an absolutely remarkable thing it was just so whimsically creative the sort of devices that hank came up with there's this thing called the book of good times which uh appears to characters and like tells them what they have to do and it's like it's reading their mind and knows the future but it's just like a magical instruction book and i love that there's also like magical sparkly white stone stuff there's a monkey like there's just a lot of fun things happening i also really liked how there were a bunch of kind of separate narrative going on with the different characters that kind of all interweaved i thought that was really well done but the bit where i started having issues with it um was that I feel like the book exists to um, put forth Hank Green's views about life in the world. And to be fair, I agree with him on a lot of those points, big and small. But he's talking about fame, he's talking about money, the nature of ideas, human purpose, power, especially in terms of the internet, haters, punditry, hiring diversely, like one in a million things. And it feels like he's kind of constructed this narrative to be able to put forth his views about all of that stuff and it just shakes out to be really unrealistic to me like the the crux of like the the climax uh it just seems really unrealistic <laughs> it's just like how all of the all of the things in the world have come together for what happens in this book i just don't buy it there are a lot of kind of insightful points in it though and and i wanted to bring out two about the same same topic um, here's what I know about internet media companies. They will do whatever they can to make money. Oh, certainly, they're all run by idealistic sounding progressives, but when it comes down to whether or not to use their customers to make more money, they will do it. And I work for a startup and I know what that feels like. And then still talking about this company about 20 pages later, this company's created false scarcity because they think that's the best way to capture the value they're creating. And then someone says, creating the value is what people publicly praise, but capturing value is what is actually rewarded, which is like really the, the crux of business, right? Lots of clever stuff like that. But that leads on to my main criticism of the book which is that there are five narrators, April, Maya, Andy, Miranda, and Carl. Um, and with the possible exception of Miranda, they all have the same voice. They all have this really developed internal monologue that methodically explains this like homogenous, mostly homogenous viewpoint about the world. And I would constantly forget who the first person perspective was like in almost every chapter. I would just like forget who was who who I was because they all sounded the same which is a shame they were all like different enough characters like I, I recognize that they had different characteristics and, and different thoughts and feelings sort of um but they all kind of all of their internal monologue was so consistent with each other um to the point that it it just felt like a parable all that being said it was a really fun book you know if you take it with a pinch of salt that it's not going to be really realistic and it is just going to be a bit of a sci-fi adventure very fun and satisfying conclusion um especially all of the 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 whole space alien stuff in the broader context of how that physically works i think was a really cool strategy 
Um, loads of loads of really cool bits, but but yeah, that whole different but same perspective thing really threw me off, which is a great shame. If you've read it, did you have a similar kind of experience? Did you pick up on that at all? Did, did you pick up on it but it not bother you? Or um, do you just completely disagree with me? Uh, I would love to hear that down in the comments below. Um, this has been a video about A Beautifully Foolish Endeavour by Hank Green, and I will see you soon for another one. Bye.